Hello friends, welcome back to the automotive basic session. This is Soma Shekhar. In part 1 video, we have seen what is CAN protocol, need of a CAN, history and layered structure of a CAN. And now I am going to describe you the properties of the CAN protocol. I will be dividing CAN properties into two parts. So let's see one by one. The, so the agenda for the day is properties of the CAN protocol. The various CAN properties are prioritization of messages, guarantee of latency times, configuration flexibility, multicast reception with the time synchronization, system wide data consistency, multi master, error detection and signaling, automatic transmission of corrupted messages as soon as the bus is idle again, distinction between the temporary errors and autonomous switching off of the permanent failure of the nodes. Let's start with prioritization of messages. Dear friends, CAN is not a node oriented or address based protocol. CAN is the message based protocol. So within a CAN network messages are transmitted based on the priority. So you can see in this diagram we have 120 ohm registers at both the sides so CAN network must be terminated with 120 ohm resistance so the network impedance will be matched and we have different ECUs ECU1 and ECU2 and ECU3 and you can see the short notes on CAN prioritization of messages properties can is not an address or node oriented protocol can is a message based protocol high priority messages will be transmitted past here you may ask how the priority will be decided in can network by different issues the priority is decided based on the identifier identifier does not indicate the destination of the message instead it indicates the meaning and priority of the message so lower the value of the identifier higher is the priority and higher the value of identifier the priority will be the lower for that particular message so let's see an example how can notes prioritize the messages let us consider I have ECU1 with a message identifier 1A1 I have an ECU2 with a message identifier 100 I have an ECU3 with a message identifier 21A so these identifier are in hexadecimal format and here I am considering standard frame format of the CAN so in a CAN we have two frame formats standard and extended that we will be discussing in upcoming videos so for time being keep in mind that we are going to use standard CAN frame format here so that's the reason when I am representing the same IDs in binary represent representation I will be considering 11 bits because the standard frame format is the 11 bit ID and the extended can, CAN frame format is 29 bit identifier frame format let's see how to represent 1A1 in binary so 1 consider 0 0 1 A 1 0 1 0 again 1 0 0 0 1 so similarly the binary representation for 100 is as shown here and the binary representation for 21A is as shown here so dear friends now we can easily distinguish which is the lowest value ID here is 100 so due to this the message 100 will be transmitted first because this is the lowest value and this will be the highest priority this will be having highest priority you can see here as we know that the lower value is 100 
So this is the I priority message. Thus, ECU2 will win the arbitration and gain the bus success and broadcast this message. So we will see what is arbitration in next videos. Dear friends, here I have a picture that shows how messages are transmitted in a CAN network based on priority. These messages are taken from simulated network. So here you can see 41A, 41B, 41C, 41D. They are transmitted based on their priority. That means 41A is the I priority message compared to 41B, C and D. So similarly 41B is the I priority message compared to 41C and 41D. So the rest of the messages will be transmitted accordingly. So the next property of the CAN is guarantee of latency time. What does it mean? So the guarantee of latency time means the time taken for transmitting a message and receiving an acknowledgement for the same. Let's see with an illustration how exactly it will happen in our CAN network. Suppose I have a two nodes in my CAN network node A acts as a transmitter and node B acts as a receiver. Suppose the node B is going to send a send its message to node B or any other node. So the node B transmits the message. You can see here. So what no receiver will react? So the receiver will check the transmit received message from node A whether it is error free or not. If it is error free, the node B will send acknowledgement to the node A. So here the time consumed for this complete process is defined as guarantee of latency times in the CAN network. Friends here I have some definitions for you. So let's understand what is message, what is signal, what is what do you mean by broadcasting. Let's say Let's start with message. Message is the container holding a block of data. A single message can have many number of signal. So a single message in a CAN network, a single message can have maximum of 64 signals and minimum of one signal. Signals. <coughs> what is signal? Signal is a piece of information in a message and broadcasting distribution of messages over the medium in our CAN network the medium is twisted pair cable and next we will see how messages and signals are represented are coming from ECU so example of messages and signals you can see in figure the message with identifier 67 is having only one signal but if you come to next message the message with identifier 64 is having six signals the message with identifier 66 is having a two signals similarly other messages is having four and three so this is from practical point of view the next property of CAN protocol is configuration flexibility what does it mean? The flexibility means in a CAN network connecting and disconnecting the nodes from a network will not affect the functionality of the network. That means nodes can be connected and disconnected at any point of time. So let's see with the animated example here. So I would like to use the word plug and play. How exactly it happens? See. I am connecting ECM, IBS, PCM and HC2. ECM is engine control module, IBS is intelligent brake system and PCM is the powertrain control module and HC2 is the heading control unit too. I have newly added 4 issues to my existing network but these newly added issues PCM, ECM, IBS and HC2 are 
not going to affect the functionality of the other is use anti lock brake system and heat hvac ccm and transmission control module city collision mitigation is used so if i remove the issues now from the network so this will also not affect a functionality of the network the network can function as it is so here i have an example suppose if the issues are not existed let's say for example in our industry we will be validating or developing only one issues so but the rest of the issues we need for our testing or development purpose so we can simulate those issues in this manner using the tool canoe so here we have the simulated issues so this this is the can network simulated can network you can see it here so that's all from today's presentation thank you all for watching kindly subscribe to automotive basic session channel so that you will get notifications for upcoming videos and for queries please leave a comment on the same channel i will cover in next videos thank you until then take care bye bye see you